this is part two of our media practice exam review. So let's just get straight into it. All right, so for this question, we are looking at what we already wrote for question two. The question goes like this. How do the narrative conventions you described in question two combine with media codes to construct a narrative? Provide examples from the narratives you studied this year. And it's got 12 marks thrown at it. Narrative conventions are usually implied, that is, they exist in the minds of the audience rather than being explicitly seen in the narrative. They are how the audience both constructs and makes sense of the narrative. Media codes are the physical elements that the audience experiences, which brings the narrative conventions to the media form. Stronger answers will demonstrate an advanced understanding of how these two things combine and will address a variety of codes using strong examples from their chosen narratives. Weaker answers will not address how the elements combine and will discuss a very limited number of codes. And again, you don't have to compare the two narratives. What you can't do is make up your own conventions or codes. So for example, the convention of suspense isn't a convention, just saying. So we really need to just revise again what the codes are. But first, let's just remember that the media conventions we learned through the acronym COPMES. But do we really need to go through them again? Yeah, I think we do. Really quick, let's go. Cause and effect, opening, development and resolution, point of view, multiple storylines, establishment and development of characters, setting, structuring of time. Cop mess. Now as far as media codes go, there are a ton of codes for screen media. As you remember, they would be camera techniques, acting, mise-en-scene, editing, lighting, sound. Camera techniques, acting, mise-en-scene, editing, lighting, sound. Camels. Camels. So, for example, you could say in the Isle of Dogs, it was common for Wes Anderson to use the camera technique code to have close-ups of the characters' faces looking straight at the camera with a fixed camera. This allowed the audience to engage with character development, which is a convention used in film storytelling. This allowed the audience to engage with the characters' feelings and thoughts through the use of close-up as well as keeping an eye on the action happening in the background, creating a juxtaposition between the character's thoughts and intents and the action happening in the scene as well. You're going to need more detail than that, but that's a start. The most similar question to this in last year's exam is this one right here. And I would encourage you to have a look at Brett Lamb's video that delves into this question in detail. And I will include a link to his playlist of exam videos at the end of this video. The next question was taken straight out of last year's exam. A feature common to production design across media forms is a clear understanding of the proposed audience or audiences. Explain how you planned to engage your proposed audience through the use of one media code or convention in your media production design. Now, rather than try and tackle this one myself, I'm going to defer to the amazing Brett Lamb over there at LessonBucket.com and please have a look at his video, which I will give a link to at the end of this video. Uh, and he goes through this masterfully, so please watch that. The next question was, identify and explain one media code that you explored in your media production development. I don't think we need to spend any more time talking about codes. I think we've done it already. But if you like, here's a quick recap. Camera techniques, acting, mise-en-scene, editing, lighting, sound. Camels. I will add though that a media code is a technical written or symbolic tool to construct meaning or could be a combination. So with this specific question, students should identify a code, just one code, and explain how they explored it using media language. So for example, I explored the code of camera through my use of smooth camera movement, high and low angle shots, and also framing through a wide and close up camera shot size. Okay, so the next question looks something like this. Reflect on the development of your individual style through the media production process. Refer to two aesthetic or structural qualities of your work. Individual style may relate to aesthetic or structural qualities of the student's work, including the themes, the content, narrative, genres, conventions, techniques, technologies, equipment, or materials used by the student. 
It may refer to other media makers who are inspirational for the student. An individual style is developed through the media production process and is primarily considered during the development and pre-production stages. This question requires students to articulate their personal individual style and how it developed through their production. High marked responses should also include strong reference to each stage of the media production process. So for top marks on that one, insightful and detailed description of an individual style, referencing aesthetic or structural qualities and or various media makers who served as inspiration. Extensive reference to the development of this style through the media production process. Clear articulation of the media production process the student followed and extensive use of media language. So if all those things are there, you'd get top marks. So that's it for this particular video, but don't forget to check out Brett Lamb's video playlist if you haven't already had a look at that. And I will also see you in part three.